was 40,000 rupees that led Kanu Ashok to commit suicide. He had borrowed this from two microfinance firms and an unfortunate accident left him jobless. Unable to pay the installments, Ashok committed suicide. Leaving his old mother and wife behind. Fearing a backlash from recovery agents, Ashok's wife fled the village and his house was taken away in lieu of his outstanding balance, leaving his old mother on the roads. And Ashok was not the only one. In a short span of time, Andhra Pradesh saw a string of suicides, all apparently due to coercive practices followed by the microfinance firms. Protests rose from all corners of the state and it resulted in this. Vijay Mahajan, the chairman of BASICS and the president of the Microfinance Institutions Network, feels that the Andhra Pradesh ordinance could strangle the entire industry. Well, the AP ordinance is severely constraining, uh, not because of the spirit with which it was brought in, but because of the micro uh, regulations that are there. It decides, for example, how frequently we can collect. Uh, uh, it decides uh, where we can actually collect Panchayat Bhavan, for example. It tells us uh, that we cannot lend to uh, any woman who is a member of a self-help group. And in Andhra Pradesh, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, almost 1.1 crore women are members of self-help groups. So who do you lend to? So due to all these restrictions, effectively the, the ordinance puts MFI out of business. While this was bad enough, in many parts of Andhra Pradesh, the protests took form of loan waivers, and this has amplified into large-scale defaults and is threatening to cripple the entire industry. Andhra Pradesh has the largest concentration of microfinance institutions in the country, and their total loan portfolio is around 7,500 crores. The massive defaults have ignited fears of subprime-like crises, and banks have been wary of lending to the microfinance institutions. They are worried about banks stopping fresh lending. Banks will take appropriate decisions on a case-by-case -case basis depending upon the status of the MFI. Banks are not here to fund losses. Banks fund viable entities. It's more important that the microfinance industry sorts its own house in order and the banks are lenders and we believe we will. It's, it's an initiative that we would like to support on a viable basis. Puri's sentiments have been echoing from all corners of the banking sector. But Samit Ghosh, the head of microfinance firm Ujjivan, says it is important for banks to support the MFIs through this difficult phase. A lot of microfinance institutions today uh, are not getting fresh money, whereas they are continuing to repay their old loans to the banks. And this translates into a liquidity kind of squeeze for them, and they are not able to service their customers. Uh, we hope that you know, the banks will sooner or later realize that, you know, uh, they need to support microfinance in the rest of the country. Uh, otherwise, you know, the whole industry will be at risk. Uh, their portfolios itself will be at a risk. And, uh, you know, I mean, a uh, great job which has been done for the last 20 years in terms of financial inclusion for 25 million families will be lost. <laughs> Even Anurag Agarwal, the senior vice president at Intellicap, a consultancy firm for the MFI sector, feels that the fears are unfounded and the comparison to the subprime crisis is unfair. Uh, comparing it to a subprime uh, crisis is something that people have been talking about ever since the subprime uh, crisis happened. I have personally interacted with a lot of investors who said microfinance is another subprime. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the clear distinction was that subprime loans were being given to people who had bad credit histories. Whereas microfinance clients enjoyed a very good credit history. In fact, there was, uh, you know, over the last 20, 30 years, uh, India has had uh, microfinance borrowers who have been, you know, having repayment rates in excess of 99%. The other major conflict point was that of interest rates. Lending rates for most MFIs vary between 24 to 36%. 
and the high rates have raised quite a few eyebrows. And under pressure from the government, the bigger MFIs have agreed to reduce their rates to 24% in the next 12 to 18 months. However, Vikram Akula, the chairman of the biggest MFI in the country, SKS, feels that artificial capping of interest rates is not the right thing to do. Interest rate caps are actually good from the perspective of the poor. For the poor, if you look at it, uh, a, a, a bank loan from a regional rural bank, which, which is a subsidized loan that may be at 7 to 12 percent, if you actually look at the true cost of accessing that loan, how many trips to the bank branch, lost wages, bus fares, sometimes broker fees that they have to pay to access these loans, it ends up being much higher than the interest rates that microfinance institutions charge. And even Mahajan thinks so. He feels that the interest rates will go down, but putting a time limit on it might threaten the existence of the smaller microfinance institutions. There is a downward sloping curve for interest rates, and it's a function of what is the, uh, the average loan size and what is the total outstanding of an organization. So in the early stages when the borrower's loan size is 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, and the the organization's own outstanding is 50 crore or 100 crore. It is not possible to make break even, even at 30 percent. But slowly, as the loan size goes up to 10,000, 12,000, then you can bring down the interest rates to say 26, then 24, like that. As the organization reaches a size of say 1,000 crores, you know, you need one computer system, whether you are at 100 crore or whether you are at 1,000 crore. You know, maybe a slightly bigger server. But investment doesn't go up tenfold. So because of this, the scale economy is set in and it's possible as organizations become larger and as the loan size becomes larger, the density goes up to reduce interest rates. So right now the larger MFIs have said they will bring it down to 24%. While the smaller ones are saying they will move towards that as they achieve breaking. While the entire world is debating whether MFIs are charging high interest rates or not, Indu Vedande, a fruit seller and an MFI customer, feels that the rates are affordable and much cheaper than those of money lenders. And it is perhaps testimonies like hers that give the real account. And the microfinance industry has played a very important role in changing the lives of millions of people like her. Up next, we'll find out what are the learnings and how the microfinance industry can emerge out of this crisis.